Yes, exciting days, the victory. We're on a series, teaching series on victory. And uh, the intention of victory is, it, is ours. He, he did it, but it, it's out, it's for, he did it for us. Uh, he did it so that we could get all the yummy benefits of what he painfully bought. And the goal is not that we just brood over his pain, but that we celebrate his victory in, through the pain. And we looked a bit at that last week, how <clears throat> it was for the joy before him, joy set before him that he endured yeah. the cross and despised its shame. He, he, he was going through that for some incredible outcomes. Yeah. And, and we also looked the week before, we looked really about how really just to kind of clarify the immensity of Jesus, um, God and man together dying on a cross, being raised from the dead, and, and really just wanted to land the point that he died for you, he died as you, and you died in him. Yeah. Yes. All right, he died for you, so that's a common message in Christianity that he died for you. Yay, that's true, it's, he died for you, but he also died as you, and you died in him. So your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You, are, you have been crucified with Christ. You don't need to do any crucifying. <laughs> he did it so you don't have to. And, uh, and, and the outcome of all of that, uh, what, what I want to talk about, this is sort of number three in our series on victory, and we're going to keep going right up to Easter. Uh, where we're going to celebrate resurrection. Yeah. Without the resurrection, everything else, all of the bets are off. Everything else is meaningless. We are hopeless. We are lost in our sins. We believe a lie. We shouldn't really bother. But if he's raised from the dead, then the world has been changed already and we need to join in. Uh, reality changed that day and we're going to celebrate that together uh, <clears throat> with some mighty celebrations as we work towards that. T today I felt... We needed just to, uh, I don't know what you do, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm learning to get the nutrients out of what God has said and what he's doing. And what I mean by that is, we heard like the testimony this morning, wasn't it great? And you can process that at one level and go, that was great, well done team, thank you God, hallelujah, yay, and move on. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, that, that, that's okay. At one level, that's okay. And, and if someone asks you after the meeting, say, what's happening? I hope just, oh, well, we'll go out on the streets and people who can't breathe properly get healed. And you can relay the information. But I, I want to just sit there and go, it's the best way I can describe it. Like, God opened a man's airways yeah. on Socky Hall Street. Hmm, yeah. isn't that good? Yeah. What's that telling me? He cares about people's breath. He cares about everybody's breath. If he's helping him breathe, he wants to help everybody breathe. And, and the same principle can apply to, you know, you can preach a message, you can get a revelation. You know, you can, and you go, oh, God, I know that now. I can write it in my journal or I preach the message on it. I've heard a message on it. And you can go, have you ever heard about the goodness of God? Oh, yes, I know about the goodness of God. Or you can go, hmm. You can camp out on the goodness of God. You can kind of marinate in the goodness of God. You can start to think, ooh, God is good to me, for me. So, so I want to do a bit of camping out rather than move on. We've got two amazing truths that we've looked at over... And, 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 but, but what are the nutrients of victory? I'm just really going to talk about one and try and unpack it this morning. And, and it's this, it's, it's ah, if I can say it, it's our unlimited union with Jesus. Ah, we have been given unlimited union with Jesus. Ah. <laughs> There's a, there's a, it's kind of a paraphrased translation by a South African scholar. It's called the mirror word. 
And he translates Romans 5, 1 like this, says by this. Yeah, righteousness by faith realized means unlimited friendship with God. Yeah. Just, just stew on that one for a decade. Yeah. You know, we read our Bibles and we read the Bible heroes and you read about Abraham and he was a friend of God. What happened in Christ meant that we're all friends of God. We have unlimited access to unlimited intimacy, to unlimited friendship because of the righteousness that Jesus has given us. Yummy, yummy. Did you know? There's no end to... How many of you have ever had a, like a physical, emotional experience of God? Just, just put your hand in the air. Quite a lot of you, I'd imagine. How many of you had like more than one? There is no limit. You know how sometimes if you go to a party and the bar is prepaid, it's like, yay. But there's often a... There's, you know, the tab. But if the person who's done that is smart, they've put a limit on the... Could drink the thing dry. Uh, no, with Jesus, it's like, you had that, well, have some more. And next time it'll be different to last time because I am, I am infinitely full of yummy goodness and yummy possibilities there is no end to your experience of him he doesn't kind of come along and go Psst, that's it that's it man like, you know that's all you're getting you should be grateful for that and then you're like oh please please no 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 got to say more louder no, 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 no. He's just kind of... I mean, longer than I could... More spit than I have. He's forever pouring, 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 pouring. And it's not like, oh, he's really doing a lot on Mary Lou now, so it can't be possible for any of the... It's the same. Like, Hi, good afternoon. Just... Yeah, splash. Yeah, splash. Yeah, we haven't done that for a while. Why don't you splash somebody if you know what we're talking about? There's just no end. There's no end to intimacy. There's no end to... For, and there's no end for everybody. It's like, oh, look at all those special people. No, no. There's no, there's, there's, there's no extra special people. There's just special people. It's unlimited. It's unfathomable. It's so unlimited that there's no limit. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? <coughs> it means like, <coughs> like when, we're in, when we're walking in this life for the 80, 90, however many years it gives us, there is absolutely no limit to our exploration, enjoyment, and experience of God in this life. There's no limit to new truths, fresh perspectives happening to us. There's no limit to supply, encounter. There is no limit. And nothing about that is to do with what you've bought and everything to do with what Jesus bought. Righteousness by faith realized is unlimited friendship with God. Because he took your sin and made you righteous. You're as right with God as Jesus is because he gave you his righteousness. Okay, Nick. You're as right with God as Jesus is because he gave you his righteousness. You could never generate your own. So he, took, he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So I think I did this with you last week, but, but just hold up your finger. Just look at that mighty finger. 
that is as righteous as Jesus. I mean, risk it and hold up your whole hand. The arm, it's all as righteous as Jesus. I mean, both hands, the legs. No one has had it all. And there's no one has excluded from entering the fullness. Because you, Colossians tells us that you have been given fullness. Now, it's confusing because Ephesians says, be filled, and Colossians says, you're filled. <laughs> Do you find that in the Bible? You're like, wow, well, I thought in that, I read that letter, and Paul's saying to them, be filled, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he writes another letter, you have received fullness in Christ. Like, Paul, what, which one is it? It's both. You have the fullness. So one of the things we established as we looked is what Jesus showed us is that the hum, a human, a bog-standard human, which is what I am, yeah, with no, no upgrades, just no extraterrestrial superpowers, a bog-standard human like you and me has the capacity is spacious enough to be indwelt fully by God. There's room in you for all of heaven. Because it doesn't exist in the way that this exists and because you were designed from the beginning to be a place where God inhabits. Union with you was his first idea, not an afterthought. So, you have received fullness because Christ in you is the hope of glory, so be filled with the fullness. It's not like I've got to find the thing to fill me. No, he is in you. It's just who is, who is filling you in your current experience and thoughts. I'm going to come on to that. Do you see? If it's like, I've got to go over there to get the fullness, then that's a bit of a journey and a mission. But if he already put the fullness in you, and now your job is to be filled with the fullness. Yeah. That's really what, if you put those two things that Paul says together, he says, you're full, now be filled with the fullness that we, with which you've been filled. <laughs> That means no one is without and has to go find. Everyone has. It just has to have you. That song was so good this morning. But I just forget the exact phrase. But it's this sense of, oh, if I just let the wall down, he's going to break out. He's not going to break in. Well, he'll do both, actually. He's totally, but he wants to, he's all of you, all of him is in all of you. He wants you to let him out. Just have a little conversation internally and say, it's what he's saying. True, Jesus. Are you, all of you, inside me? If that's true, would you get out? Would you do something in me today? I let you out. Fill me with the fullness. Just have a little chat with him. Just, just give you a minute to go. If it's true, I want it. Have you got bored in your Christian life? No need. Because there's no end to friendship with God. There's always something new. Fresh, different. Deeper, longer, higher. When we've been in heaven 10,000 years, we just got started. <laughs> Have you seen this? No, oh, I haven't seen that. I've been here 10,000 years, I hadn't seen that. Well, I've got a lot more up my sleeve, and I have an infinitely long sleeve. <laughs> he wants out. I mean, he really does want to fill you. He's filled you with fullness, now he wants to fill you with the fullness. <laughs> Um, hmm. Let's 
so we have a depth of union, an infinite depth of union. I could just stay there all day. That's just such a big thought. Isn't it beautiful? I told you the story about hearing God on my spin bike and stuff like that. See, see he's portable. Because wherever you go, he is because you're already full of the fullness. Yeah. So he, number two is, I've kind of said this in one way or another, I'm going to say it again. This, this union is available to anyone because he did all the work to break through all the issues. So I have issues. Yeah, join the club. I have pain. Yep. I don't understand. Yep. Jesus suffered to remove all possible hindrances so that this can be true for everybody. It's true for everybody. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're filled with the fullness and you can be filled by that fullness. And that's going to help all of us move on with our stuff, which all of us have stuff. But the goal of our stuff is not that we work harder at it. It's that we partner with him and let him do the doing. Now we're partnering. We're not just sort of not doing. And as we'll see in a minute, partnering with him is a bit of a mind trip for most of us. Do you want to hang on to that thought? It's kind of like partnering with Jesus is freaks you out, man. Sorry, I was, born in, I was born before the 70s, so occasionally it comes out of me. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do it here. So we all have infinite available union with God. <laughs> he knows about all the issues, and that's partly why he went to the cross. That we, we, he knew we had issues. He knew about not just all of them in general, but yours in particular. Specifically, he went to the cross for them. And now, he lives in you in fullness. One of our difficulties comes is it doesn't feel like it. And therefore, we think it's not true. Hmm. Let me tell you a story. It's in the Bible. Jesus says to the disciples, the apostles, we're going to go across the other side of the lake in this boat. And several of them, as you know, are fishermen. So they all get in the boat and they start to go across the lake. And there's a mighty storm. A mighty storm. So that the, the biblical account says that they are sinking. So, first question, is Jesus with them? He is where? He is in the same boat. Whatever boat you're in, he's in it. They, even the experienced ones, are scared. The account tells us that they're frightened. Because of the, the magnitude of the storm, yeah? They're in a storm, they're in a boat. Some of them are sailors, they know what this means. They are sinking, they are scared. What is Jesus doing? See, he has no breathing problems. He's like in the bottom of the boat, the stern of the boat, and he's like... The waves, he's like... So Jesus is in the boat, but he's not responding in the boat like everybody else in the boat. And they have a go at him for not being as panicked as they are. Don't you care that we're drowning? <laughs> See, we interpret his different response to our circumstances is that he's not really there or he doesn't really care. 
It doesn't mean he's not there. It just means he's working to a different drumbeat. Yeah. So, just imagine your life is a boat. And it's a bit stormy at the moment. And you're like, ah! Or a, maybe a calmer version of ah. We're British people. We don't go ah on the outside, but we go ah on the inside in other cultures people go ah on the outside and on the inside we choose to stiff up a lip and we look at everybody and we're like how are you today I'm fine be fine (laughs) you know already it's not fine so Jesus is in you but when you're panicking he may be having a snooze I don't mean he's not on the job, he's not working. I just mean he's responding very differently to what's going on. And we can interpret that as he doesn't care, he's not there, he's disconnected. No, he's totally connected. He's just like, hmm, why don't we deal with this my way? Huh. So don't dismiss the truth because it doesn't feel true. Maybe Jesus is at work in the trauma, the trial, the difficulty, the delay, the scary thing. So when we start to lose our peace, we actually start to lose connection to the presence of Jesus in us. Because it's, it's the peace of God that keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus is what Philippians tells us. That doesn't mean he's gone away. It means we've tuned into another reality and out of his. Do you see? It doesn't mean he's not there. It means maybe how we're responding isn't how he's responding. And he wants to pull us back into his responses rather than us going, Come and join us in our absolute panic, Jesus. Then we know that you care. If you're not looking animated and scared, you don't really care about this. You're not empathizing. You're not even sympathizing. You're sleeping and we're drowning. I want to connect with you, Jesus. That means you get freaked out like me. Then I know you really, really are with me. And we'll freak out together. Then I'll feel fellowship. Am I freaking out? Hmm. I've noticed something about God. He doesn't get manipulated by my feelings. He just kind of goes, hmm, that's interesting. How's that working for you? He invites me into his place of triumph, of peace, of, of victory, of actually being in control rather than being out of control. (sighs) And sometimes it's like that. It's like, it's just so scary and you're not scared. You don't understand. No, he totally understood. I just wasn't scared. Fear can make you think that the only way other people are with you is when they're as scared as you. That's fear talking. He's in the boat. He's at peace. He has the answer. He's not even joining in bailing out the water with the bucket. He's just like, stand back. They have connected to me. Peace be still. Did you know you had complete, complete union with Jesus? I know how I was taught, like being born again, you're a new creature. And, and it was a bit like, 
Jesus was in me like my appendix. Which I now don't have, so that's not very clever, is it? I was surgically removed when I was 16 years old. But like, you invite Jesus into your life is, is the... I'm looking at Christians, aren't I? Yeah. You did this. If you didn't, let's pray. pray. Everybody bow their head, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Come into my life. You Lord of my life. And, and it's as if he takes up residence. I don't know I, I, exactly where that might be in our imagination. It's like, there's the Jesus bit. It's in my spirit. Yeah, it's in my spirit. But he's tiny. Tiny, tiny, is in my spirit. So use a very high voice. Jesus is in my spirit. And then I've got all this body going on. I've got all these emotions and the soul and the brain and all that. And somewhere inside me is this is Jesus. Because I'm born again. And Jesus is in my spirit. Hallelujah. And we remember on Sundays, oh Jesus is in me. Woohoo! Is in my spirit. Small, but he's there. And somehow, he's going to take over the rest of me. It's going to take a long time because the spirit is leaving up. Oh, Jesus. I wish you were bigger. And I wish I had my appendix back. No, no, I don't. It, was, it was a troublesome appendix. <laughs> Good news is not in your appendix. The good news is it is in your spirit. But he's not locked away down there. The good news is, a biblical point of view is, if he's got your spirit, he's got you. Oh, doesn't sound very big. I know about new creation, but you, you are righteous, not just this a tiny bit, this is a righteous thing. One day I will be righteous, but it's just this bit righteous. I have become the righteousness of God about here. <laughs> he didn't say that. Said, you are the righteousness. Let me help you out. Some, am I helping? I'm enjoying it. I'm hoping I'm helping. Do you remember? Infinite amounts. <laughs> Rivers of living water. That's what Jesus said. Will flow from within. Yeah. Just, just, just pull. Just gotta keep remembering this. <clears throat> Complete union. Because of him, you're in Christ who became for us wisdom of God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, all in a wanna, womb, bang, kapow. Thank you, God. So, he's in your body. Romans 8 11, the spirit is giving life to your mortal body. He's not tucked away in here going, oh, let me out, let me out. He's in your body already. Giving life to your mortal body. Wow. There's no separation between your body and the spirit. If you, his spirit's in you, you your bo his body, your. <laughs> that word there. If your spirit's in you, he's in your body, all of it. All right? There's not this sort of nice box. There's still a bit here. And oh my goodness, how do we get that out? No, if he's in, he's in. And he's in all. So he's in, he's in your body. He's in your emotions. Paul says in Philippians 1 verse 8 that he yearned for them with the affection of Christ. That's not a religious statement. It's about his feelings are affected by the Jesus, the fullness that's in him. He's making him yearn for these people with his affections, with his feelings. Uh, Romans 12.10, love with brotherly affection. You know those 
kind of feelings we have for one another as Christians, that's Jesus feeling in your feelings. The little thing, he, he got out. How about your mind? Oh, I don't know where that thought came from. I do. You have the mind of Christ. Already there. Already present. Already happening. Already accessible to you. You have instant access to the mind of God. I like this one. This is connected to the body thing as well. Paul says that in Colossians 1 that he labored striving according to his power which mightily works within him. Uh, how did Elijah outrun the chariots? How did Caleb at 85 years old go, I'm still as strong as when I was 45, give me this matter, I'm, I'm going to do some warfare, I'm going to win. I still, I'm still as strong. How does that happen? It's because God gives, God gives energy to people's bodies. Above and beyond what you may think is naturally plausible or possible. Ah, whoa. So there's the Apostle Paul. He's been beaten. He's been shipwrecked. He's been left for dead. And somehow he is galvanized. He, he is energized. He is, he's the energizer bunny from heaven. What batteries have you got? You've got the fullness of Christ, didn't you? So if yours are going a bit flat, you can kind of tune over to his. <laughs> How about your will? Sometimes the stuff that we talk about is like, I want to be a better Christian. I'm deciding to be a better Christian. I'm going to walk out this Christian life. I've, I've, got, to, I've, got, to, I've got to do this thing. Lord, help me do your will. But it's all about me doing it, me deciding my strength of will. I do not want to be found in the strength of my will. I want to be found in the righteousness of Christ. I don't want to be found in my own generated righteousness, which is what Paul says. I want to be found in the righteousness of God. I want to be found, found in my union with him. I want to be found expressing his life. I want to be found doing his will because I'm sensing and galvanized by his energy and his will with which he works inside of me because God is at work inside of me to will and to work for his good pleasure he's, he's willing you to will he's working on your will he's working with your will he's willing he has enough self-control even if you find lacking oh I always change my mind oh, I'm, always just, I'm always just getting blown around he's not <laughs> Go away. <laughs> you escaped my appendix. <laughs> So whatever box, says the Lord says, whatever box you put me in inside of you, or you put me in a box in your brain, or you put me in a box in your stomach, or you put me in a box outside the door or next door to you, I know you. I am in you. I love you, and I want you to feel my fullness in every dimension of your life. Ha, ha, ha going to affect your emotions, I'm going to affect your body, I'm going to affect your thinking, I'm going to affect your will, I'm going to affect your heart, because I am already there. Allow the guy who sleeps in the boat, allow his reality to overtake yours. going to cling on to this lectern. And the fourth thing, maybe you didn't know there was four, but we've done three. 
the benefits of our unlimited union with him is number one is the is the depth of union the unlimited nature of our union number two is the availability of that union to all number three is the completeness of that union it's every aspect of you is united with christ he lives all of him lives in all of you huh. <laughs> Well, there's probably others, but this is my last one for today, which is the, the blessing of our infinite union and intimate union. Sim- simply put, you are worthy of all God's blessings. <sighs> As a son of God, you have every right to expect that he will bless you huh so he doesn't look at you different to how he looks at Jesus remember you are the righteousness of God in Christ you are his favorite do you want to say that with me some of you Say, I am his favorite. I am his favorite. favorite. Say it maybe a couple of times. Let's go for this. I am his favorite. He redeemed those under the law that we might receive full rights as sons, which captures the whole sense of Roman adoption. They had the same rights. The adopted sons and daughters had the same rights in the house as the born sons and daughters. Same. There's no difference. It wasn't a different deal if you were adopted into those that were born in. We are in. Jesus is our brother. We are worthy of all the blessings. The church has been told for centuries that we're not worthy. Jesus, we weren't, but he made us worthy. That's denying what he did on the cross and in the resurrection for us. I'm worthy of all his blessings. I'm worthy of all spiritual gifts. I'm worthy of all encounters. I'm worthy of health. I'm worthy of financial provision. I'm worthy of good relationships. I'm worthy of promotion. I'm worthy of being used to impact the world with Jesus and presence. I'm worthy of being a world transformer, a world changer. It's not little me. It's big him in this jar of clay. So I wonder if we could do that conversation again. Let's let's surrender to, let's release, let's connect to I'm looking at people who are all filled with the fullness of Jesus. I'm looking at people who are plugged into the infinite intimacy with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who have unlimited friendship with God. <laughs> just, just let that marinade in you. Just go, I don't know what you do. Slurp. I just slurp. I'm like, oh, it's so good. But don't just think, oh, that's nearly the end of the message now. Learn that, move on. No, no, this, I don't want to talk, I don't want to teach you so you learn something. I believe God wants you to know something. He wants to experience something this morning. Huh. So Holy Spirit, bubble up inside of all of us. Why don't you invite him to bubble up? That's another way you could do this. So Holy Spirit, would you bubble up inside of me? It's not supposed to look like anything, but you're supposed to know something's changing. <laughs> I'm just gonna just just do it. Just just do however you want to do it. Just yeah. I'm gonna bless what he's doing inside of different ones of you. Yeah. Just rise up, Holy Spirit. Just fill with your fullness. 
Yeah, yes. There, right there. Ha. 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 Fill with the fullness. Ha. Ha. Just sense a healing coming to your body as well as he does that. I don't know what it is, but I just sense healing traveling through your veins. Ha! Ha! Fill him with the fullness, God. Ha! Anything, cardiac, just be healed, be at peace. Ha! Yeah. Fill him with the fullness, God. Ha! <laughs> yes, fill him with the fullness, Jesus, bubbling up, not in the appendix any longer. God, just show us by encounter, show us what where you are, how you are there, how you're filling us, God. I wonder if we could get the ministry team at the front again. Yeah, come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us up, God. Ha! 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 Whoa! Ha! Ha! Yay! Do we have more ministry team? <laughs> they're coming, they're coming. A minute before we do kids. Just. Huh. Huh. So what I'm seeing is huh. what I'm seeing is it's like it's it's breakout day. He's been there all along, but he wants to break out of you in a new way and a new level. And that's true for all of us. And and if you'd like that to be true for you this morning. Uh, we're going to stand in a line and we're going to invite you out and we're just going to lay hands on you and we're going to call out of you what he's already put in you in Jesus' name. Uh, Ready, steady, go. Go.